Tana Mojo is a YouTuber and influencer with millions of followers and seemingly thousands of controversies and scandals that help keep her relevant. While she was most recently accused of racial microaggressions and not social distancing, today we're going to be looking at a few of her other irresponsible actions that are destroying this country and leading to me having a fever. Her music videos. But don't worry, I've gone through the extra effort of making sure all of these clips have subtitles. Here's why. Why does that sound like one of my voice memos after I take too much cough medicine? Today we're taking a look at four of Tana Mojo's most popular music videos to examine their lazy production techniques, sad costume design, and jarring sound editing in another installment of Clip Breakdown, Tana Mojo edition. Stay tuned. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is a playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV, and other media to figure out what is even going on here. Before we get into Tana's big old musical mess, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more clip breakdowns like this on Tana or other creators. Check out the playlist in the description below for more. But most important, hold up. Most importantly guys, if you're new here, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down there. That way you never miss new videos for me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on the notifications, and that way you'll always be in the know. We're gonna water this aloe plant, because I just realized I haven't in a while. Check out my merch for the aloe plant design, like this die-cut stickers. That's fun. Or even I have this new hooded sweatshirt. So comfy, so soft. I love it. Oh, uh, and okay, let's get into it. One thing that I noticed about all of these videos and songs themselves is that they're really short. Only one of these music videos was over two minutes long. I'm not saying every song has to be a certain length, but when all of your songs are the same structure, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, chorus, that's the structure all of our songs follow. Maybe one has a bridge that makes it a little more interesting, but the songs themselves are very short, and then the hook is usually where she tries to be the most impressive, it sounds like, but I was not as impressed as maybe she wanted me to be. In any case, the first video is for her song, W. This video was directed by Mikey Easterling, and I did check out some of his other work, so I know what to expect. <laughs> the first thing I noticed about this video is that our locations are very limited. We see that the filmmaker had a drone and was trying to get that cool palm tree lined street look that we have here in Los Angeles and certain neighborhoods. And then the rest of the video is pretty much just Tana in the middle of a street with a rented Rolls Royce. Oh, so you had $300 for the day and some insurance? Very impressive, Tana. So right off the bat, I'm interested in looking at a low budget music video that only has one location because then I know we're gonna have to make the on-screen action really interesting we're going to have to make the camera work very dynamic and the editing has to be unique so that this video doesn't feel stale by the second verse. Let's see how they do. They be talking, 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 say I'm fake, say I've changed, but I'm still the same. Diddle, just no more minimum wage. Tana, I'm so proud of you for no longer having to work minimum wage. Quick question, who picked out this costume for you? Like, I'm serious, why? And I get it, fashion is subjective. I mean, she might think that this looks really good, but it just feels like someone was like, okay, so the concept for this video is there's a Rolls Royce and then you're a traffic cone that's hanging out around it. This bright construction zone orange camo is not working for me. This is a woman who has hips and a chest, I assume, but they were like, we're gonna truncate all of that with this weird cutoff sweatshirt. But as for Tana's look, I will say that it's very defined. The long bleach blonde hair, long lashes, like extensions or strip lashes all the time, and then just jump around in the street like a ragamuffin. That's the whole look. But you don't have to be into Tana's looks, okay? It doesn't matter what you think about how she looks. The important thing is her rhymes which are supreme taking downers you ain't working and you tweaks i'm a upper i've been working all week I think trying to make one word last an entire measure is supposed to sound like, uh, see how good I am at this? I can just throw the rhymes away. But instead it makes her sound like a squeaky door. Can we get some WD-40 on the lower hinge of that one? Thanks. This is more of like a braggadocious kind of track where Tana's basically talking herself up the whole time, being like, I don't shop at Urban Outfitters, even though you probably do. In these close-ups, she's using a beauty box, which is a filter that helps smooth your skin. For me, it's going just a tad too far. She looks highly airbrushed, looking like a ghost from our you afraid of the dark. As for lyrics for the chorus of this song, again, she's trying really hard to sound cool here. And all of her songs tend to have this wordplay element to it that I think is supposed to make us be like, ah, but instead it's like, okay, we get it. You use the same producer for all of these. I'm taking W's, I'm taking W's, sorry for your loss. I'm taking W's, I'm at the W's, I'm making W's. 
sorry for your loss. I'll take your dub from you. When she keeps telling me sorry for my loss, I just assume that it's my loss of the two minutes that I spent watching this video. But it's, it's okay. I mean, it was my choice, Tana. I appreciate the apology. You'll notice she says I'm taking W's, as in she's winning. And then she's at the W, which is a hotel here in Hollywood. So I'm taking W's, I'm at the W, and I'm making W. That's where we get some poetic wordplay for your nerve. She's not just taking W's, she's making W, what you're making. Get it? You're poor. I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume Tana's actually making more than double the money I am. The average US salary is $65,000. So for the majority of people, she's telling them that I make 120 grand. That's a good amount of money. It's not exactly Rolls Royce in the middle of the street without a parking ticket money. So let's call the transit authority over here. Thank you. We've got a blonde girl blocking my road. My favorite is where they try to make Tana stand in some sort of sexy position. They're like, hey, can you and your parachute pants lean against the car and stick your butt out so it looks like you have a shape? Or maybe we could find a costume that doesn't have pockets big enough to hold a bowling ball. We're now at the second verse and already I'm tired of Tana hanging out around this white Rolls Royce and it seems like she's getting a little tired too. W's, sorry for you Tana, no, can we get off the ground? People drive there. I would absolutely never disparage someone for having a low budget. Tana probably paid for this all herself. But again, where I always come into it is like, you can have a low budget production and still put a good story on screen. In fact, I actually like the creative challenge of being like, okay, we have no money, we have a camera, we have a location, we have a car. How are we gonna make this interesting? First of all, let's not park that car in the middle of the street and then just shoot around it for the whole thing. Like I would get one or two performance takes of her at the car so that we have these beautiful beauty shots. But then I say, let's take this car out. Let's like park this car in front of the beach. Let's get this car at Runyon Canyon. Let's start bringing this beautiful car to all of these gorgeous locations that we're hinting at with these drone shots and then try to infuse some sort of story into it. And they could even still stick with the low budget kind of topic here. For example, just cause she's bragging about being at the W Hotel and throwing bands full of money, doesn't mean that that's literally what we need to see her doing on screen. In fact, a lot of music videos will kind of go the opposite Way. So maybe she's like partying in an alleyway or like hanging out drinking 40s at the ravine with her friends. That way the whole concept can be like she's untouchable because she's having so much fun with her friends that you can't say anything to affect her. And again, it's pretty cheap. They could still use found lighting, but two minutes of her just standing around and then them just trying to add these wonky VHS type effects and drone footage to pad it out. It's a little thin for me. Luckily her next video is for the song F Up, which I'm, you know, censoring that word because it's a swear. But I am happy to report that this video has a little bit more of a narrative through line to it. It has a story. I think they could have edited it just a little bit more. By the way, try saying edited it and it makes me feel crazy when I try to edit it. I like how they edited it. Whenever I say that, I feel like I'm going to get stuck in an endless loop of saying that word and one day I'm just going to be like edited it, 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 and someone's going to have to put me down. Throughout this, basically, we're seeing about how Tana, she messes things up. Cause I'm a up, and I'm so fucked up and all these voices in my head won't shut the fuck up Cause I'm a fuck up And I'm so fucked up And it's 5pm and I just woke the fuck up is this the girl who was just disparaging me for shopping at Urban Outfitters? Cause look at this set. It is urbanoutfitters.com. You really had me feeling bad about my Himalayan salt lamp. You've got a metallic mylar headboard. You're coming from me. The set design throughout this video continues to distract me. But the one thing I'll say is I can tell right off the bat that they could afford a dolly cause we have that slow dolly in. But then we dolly right back out. So the dolly move feels a little unmotivated to me. Like, are we just going in and out? I don't need that so much. Like just, is it a push in or is it a pull out? This next scene is where I start to get a little confused with Tana in a way that I often find myself doing it. Like what age does Tana think that we think she is? Like I think she's 22 or 23 at this point, but her audience seems to be much younger, like 15 and 16. And it almost seems like she would rather us think that she's still in high school. And it's like, just cause you never went to college doesn't mean you're still in high school. Is that mean to say? Either way, she's dressed like this and has a scene where she's in a classroom in her music video. And I'm just like, as a musician, who's writing about pretty serious stuff. Like she just showed us her drugs in the previous one that kind of alludes to her prescription drug abuse. So I don't see why in the next scene she's like, oh, and I'm a high school student. It's like, what is the audience? And is that really a relatable problem for you getting sent to detention? It looks like you're more worried about ODing. And I'm sorry, but I 
But I promise that I hate me more than you do. I don't know what that time change is when she says I'm sorry, but it makes my ears bleed every time. It's like the tempo gets messed up and then she comes in all off key. Uh -oh. And I'm sorry. Ugh. It's okay, sweetie. Keep trying. Also, let's take a look at this classroom where she's with her other 20-something high school friends. It looks so cramped in there. This is clearly, if anything, an elementary school classroom. Homeboy's desk is digging into this girl's back and she's like, do it for the scene. Also, according to this poster, there are some rules in the classroom. No vapes, no fun, no phones, no kissing. That's me when I turn on a new episode of Drag Race. I'm like, everyone shut the hell up and don't enjoy this for me. Pose another fly on YouTube. Take that shit and tell me who's who That's the life and style that I'm used to Gained some fame and now they wanna use you Stepped into a big pile of doo-doo. Like, how many times are we gonna do the same melody and rhyme sequence? It's driving me crazy. Also, what is even going on here when she's shown in a completely dark room next to a traffic light? I'm just now realizing that visual is even in here. Is that when she goes to detention? They put her in a vacuous black space with a traffic light for detention? What kind of public school nonsense is that? Next, Tana's at a, like, convenience store and she's stealing some liquor. And I can see what the filmmakers were going for here, but but to me, they're not giving me the story escalation that I think they wanted to. Let's see. First of all, let me tell you a quick way to gain 30 pounds. Drink two bottles of Colt 45 every weeknight for a full semester. Trust me. Don't do it, but trust me that that will work. <laughs> so second of all, I like that when the music changes, they tried to cut to this new level of desperation for Tana where she's like walking down the street with her stolen goods. My thing is her performance is a little bizarre here. Like all of a sudden she seems like she's a little in pain or like completely belligerent. I think they could have gotten even further with this sort of progression of showing that she's a mess up. Like in the classroom scene previously, we really didn't see her doing anything that the rest of the students weren't. It said no vaping. We saw other kids vaping, other kids passing notes. So it just shows her being an F up. I hate saying that, but it shows her being an F up <laughs> along with everybody else. So it doesn't really set her apart in the tone of the music video. I would have loved if when she showed up at the classroom, everyone else was like perfect straight A student. And she really stood out as the girl who didn't fit in. And then in the same like 30 seconds there where were in the classroom. They could have had her get kicked out for some other reason. All they really had her doing was talking to the teacher and saying some lyrics. But why don't we see some sort of crazy schoolyard bullying? Like take inspiration from those early pink music videos where the pretty popular girls are being rude. Like maybe right when Tana comes in, the Chrissy girl is making fun of her. So Tana like sticks gum in her hair or cuts off her ponytail or any of those other, like, I mean, admittedly cliche bully tactics. And that gets Tana sent out of the classroom. And then instead of seeing her in traffic light twilight zone there, maybe we see her go immediately to the streets and hanging out outside the school and being like sort of a delinquent outside the school for a few lines, that could be good. And that's what gets her outside to this, you know, convenience store. I think that would help me because then it's like one day in the life of this girl. She woke up in her beautiful room, which also didn't really match what she's telling us. Then she got kicked out of school and then she went to go steal some liquor. And even better, if like, while well, she's chilling outside the school, you see her smoking and doing drugs and drinking like she loves to do as part of her brand, then when she's stealing from the store, she can look even more disheveled, like have her hair messed up, her lipstick smeared, and then we can get a little more of that swaying in where it's like, oh, she's progressing, her day's getting worse and worse because she's an F up. But we didn't get any of that. Instead, Tana said, why don't I scream I'm sorry at you in G flat minor. And I'm sorry, but I can't even live in the moment. Worry about another Twitter moment. Tana, you can't just apologize for making this song and then go right into a new verse. That's counterproductive. You'll also notice this gag where it kind of tries to sell that she got caught by the police stealing and now she's been brought in. They sell this with this little siren light, like they have a blue and red strobe light that shows sirens. And then it shows her, I guess, like in a car being pulled away, but they obviously didn't have a real police car for this. So they were just using lights. So eventually she's being diagnosed by this psychiatrist and she's put in a straight jacket to bring us to this next section where the doctors are analyzing her. Make the whole world my opponent. And they wonder why I'm never focused. And they wonder why I'm always smoking. 
Now at this point, I feel like Tana is maybe overrepresenting her level of fame. First of all, what kind of hospital has a ground floor window like that into a patient's room? I also love that they clearly just took the kids from the classroom scene and they were like, everyone take out your iPhones and turn on the light. Try to make it look like you're a big crowd of people out this window. It looks a little paltry to me. It seems like Tana's fan club is a little lethargic. Maybe they all have low iron. Do you want me to take a quick selfie with you? Just like everybody else. I don't know what was with the audio there. Like that was so surreal. That ending joke was not funny and it was also bizarre because of the sound. But it feels like this was just like a tour of how to make someone's apartment look like six different places. They were like, can we make a schoolyard out of your home office? Great. Does your kitchen nook sort of look like a hospital room? Perfect. We're gonna have to clear out all of your Next up in Hannah, Hannah, Hannah Mojo's discography is the song Hefner, which is about her wanting to be some sort of sexualizing demon like Hugh Hefner. I think it comes through pretty clearly in the first few shots. Now, I've never been to the Playboy Mansion, and I don't think I'll ever go because it sounds awful, sounds crusty. But what I do think from having seen The Girls Next Door, that amazing reality show in the early thousands, is that if you sleep over there as a playmate, they're not gonna have you sleeping on the floor, ladies. Don't worry about that. If you ever wanna spend the night at the Playboy Mansion, you won't be sleeping on the crummy floor next to some crushed up Fruit Loops like these girls they show you here. This was actually just the result of some quick run and gun type filmmaking. I'm very aware of what they're doing here. It's like, you have a tight shooting schedule, you have a big room full of extras, you have time to get the wide shot where Tana's singing, and then afterwards you have to get some b-roll, some inserts. So clearly what the camera operator did here was go around with the camera handheld and just tried to grab some establishing shots of some Playboy magazines, of these models laying around. It definitely gets the job done, but it also adds this sort of chaotic element to it that I feel like doesn't do much justice to this mansion that they rented to shoot this video in. Like if you had some of those long dolly shots like we saw from the previous video you could really capture like all these girls splayed out in a big room and looking really opulent but it would take a little extra planning these tight shots of all the girls in the Playboy magazines you could have shot that anywhere you know it doesn't really show off this location at all and it certainly doesn't help establish Tana as some sort of rich person because she wakes up and she basically has like food stuck to her face all these down here trying to be a playmate I want to be Hugh Hefner I want to throw bands on these like I'm Hefner. I take 10% like I rep her. You're bitching me brain like her neck hurts. So throughout the whole video, Tana is surrounded by these discount Playboy playmates who switch between being awake and dead asleep, depending on the shot. If everyone's consciousness is fluctuating that rapidly, I would recommend Tana Mojo check for gas leaks. There might be something carbon monoxide related in this Playboy mansion of hers. Also, I get the like thought process. It's like all these girls want to be playmates, but I'm trying to be Hugh Hefner. What does Hugh Hefner even do? Does he own a magazine or is he just kind of old and retired? Tana Mojo wants to be old and retired. Great, good for you. You will be one day. For the most part in this video, Tana continues to brag while uncomfortably crammed onto this bed with some other skinny white girls. Everyone's like, ow, your elbow's in my elbow. She also brags about some of her most confusing luxury purchases. I'll drop 5K on a drop of water, more ice on my wrist than to wish it for your daughter. Okay, I think we can do that. Let's see, with tax, I think that's gonna be about about $5,233.26. Ready? What kind of line is that? Who would ever spend that much money on a drop of water and why? A lot of times in rap songs, people will be like, drop 5K on a t-shirt. And it's like, yeah, I get it. That's a lot for a t-shirt. If you're gonna pay five grand for a drop of water, I think you're really dehydrated. This big mansion of yours with a tufted headboard and you don't even have running water, Tana, that's sad. You're sad. That's just like really sad. I'm sorry I'm rich and you're not. Mm, that's okay. If being rich means I have to share my bed with 12 other girls from my Las Vegas public school graduating class, I think I'm gonna be fine. Also, if being rich means I have to make out with Bella Thorne, who looks perpetually sticky in some room that was lit by a TikToker, I'm also fine. For me, being rich means I don't have to have LED colored lights anywhere in my home. That's my idea of luxury. Playmate of 
Cut up month, cash coming lumps, keys full of bumps, man's all on my humps. Yikes, that camera angle is not doing this girl with the brown hair any favors. But also, this whole scene is bothersome. Shout out to Ashley, who I know from MTV Unfiltered. She was a good character in that. We get two seconds of Tana walking down this grand staircase, and it's like that whole staircase is probably the main reason they even rented this mansion to make it look like the Hefner Playboy Mansion. Couldn't we get some nicely staged shot where we're seeing her come down and we get a glamorous thing of her walking down the stairs, taking off her sunglasses with that red robe blowing behind her? No. It jumps right over to her in the fray of these other girls. We're getting these super unflattering shots of the house and they're shooting this whole thing to camera while there's an ugly tree trunk right behind her. Like you paid for a whole location, right? Why would you choose the ugliest backdrop? Also, it's the lighting for me. If I'm gonna pay all my own money for a music video, you better bet those close-ups are gonna be Britney Spears. Every time I try to fly, I fall. Neutrogena commercial, oil of Olay. I wanna look done. I want my glamour shots to look glamorous. And these ones, she looks washed out. They're using natural lighting and then put some sort of preset on it that lifts the shadows. So everything just looks a little washed out to me. It's not really careful. But hey, she's Tana, okay? If she wants to make out in a dark room in a rented house, that's her prerogative. Who am I to say that's a bad music video? Our last video that we're gonna look at from Canna. Canna, why do I keep giving her the craziest name? Instead of Tana Mojo, I'm gonna call her Canna Tuna. Canna Tuna. <laughs> the last video that we're gonna watch from Canna is FaceTime, which has a slightly more elegant feel. This kind of made me think of the music video for Right Through Me from Nicki Minaj, because it sort of aims to show a different side of her brand, where she's a real woman with feelings. She's wearing white, she has a sweater, all of that. The video basically follows the highs and lows of a romantic relationship between Tana and this young man who looks kind of like one of the Dolan twins, but I know is not one of the Dolan twins. They're both wearing their best seventh grade choir outfit. It looks like school picture day. It's very J. Crew because they're in this white setting and they're just like having some chill, classy time, smoking weed and reading magazines. They're like, this is my idea of how classy people do drugs. No, Tana. Classy people do drugs once a year at the white party in Palm Springs. An issue I have with this whole song is that you cannot tell what she's saying. She's not going for rapping in this. She's going more for like, like, I don't know what it is. It's Lana Del Rey got a lobotomy up in here. Did you just grab my paperback book? I got that from the thrift store. That's another attempt on them to be like, this is when we're mature and adult. He's reading a book in the chair. We finally get to the chorus, and all I'll say about that is that it has a unique sound to it. I don't wanna fall asleep on FaceTime. It's like you're gone every time my phone dies. Just a personal note, I would have tried to frame out that Ikea lamp that we see in every New York City apartment. This video sucks. It's so boring because once again, it's just Tana in one location doing the same thing over and over again. In this case, she's having a conversation with her boyfriend in the video and it's either like they're laughing and really trying to sell like their laughter. There are parts where this guy's like, oh! And it's like, that's not believable. Tana's never said anything that funny, not even in a field. From what I can tell, this song is about how Tana doesn't like falling asleep with this guy on FaceTime, or like they only talk when they're on the phone. But that's not what the video seems to be about visually. Like they're together physically the whole time. So I don't know. I feel like they're just like assigning a video concept to the song. Cause they're like, we can shoot this in a day and it's cheap and easy. And she's like, great. As long as it has a strong look to it. And in this case, it's like wearing all white, very the gap. Ooh, now it's Tana's turn to be reading the book, which I don't think she's doing in a super convincing way since she's reading the left page and then completely skips the right page to turn it. Maybe she's just skimming through it. She just wants to get the chapter name. Seriously, this is the longest song out of all of them that we're looking at. It's like three and a half minutes and all they do is sit or argue. But finally, they come to some different locations. This is clearly a house in Malibu because I can see one of my favorite restaurants on that pier behind them. Maybe that is just like where everything's a fake. Why are they dressed up like they're going to see a play? Do they have tickets to Hamilton after this? Cause I've never seen Tana dress this way. The vibe that I'm going for is like polar opposite of myself, virgin moment, like shit I would never wear. Wouldn't you want your video to be like really reflective of you and not just some version of you that you'd never purport to be? Also, if you're gonna have your shirt tucked in, I like to see a belt, but maybe this gentleman didn't have a belt. He was too busy preparing for his fake laugh. He goes, ho, 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 ho. 
ho, ho, ho. He said, Merry Christmas, y'all. Sudden wildflower field. I don't wanna fall asleep on FaceTime. It's like you're gone every time my phone dies. It got very perfumed for commercial for me at this point, and I don't understand how this outdoor field location relates to that Malibu home location. If even the filmmaker had made a decision, like, oh, the home in Malibu is where we're fighting all the time because it's real life and things look beautiful, but they're really tumultuous, just like the ocean outside. And then when we go to the field, it's like the idyllic, symbolic version of the relationship where everything is perfect and it feels just like it did at the beginning. Then there would have been some direction for them and they could have actually acted this out in a way that made sense and edited together in a way that made sense. But I don't think that the filmmaker even made those choices. I don't think they had any symbolism behind it. So it just ends up being like a montage of locations. Like I could barely sit through watching that. You really want me to watch a three minute video of this, Tana? <gasps> oh look, there's a behind the scenes. Yeah, so she bought the clothes for that at Forever 21 the day before. She really made fun of people for shopping at Urban Outfitters in one of those videos. Girl. And just a final confusing nail in the coffin, there's a completely new sound loop that comes in at the end of the song. Where do these trumpets come from? Like what? That didn't fit in with the mood of the song at all. Razzle dazzle, big band for ya. What do you guys think of Tana's music videos? Are they good efforts? Did you like the songs? Can you see my points on how they could have made these videos a little better with the same budget? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to hear your opinions. What other types of creator videos or music videos or TV shows should I cover outside of movies? I try to alternate long movies with short things, so give me some short form content suggestions below. Also, don't forget to check out the merch if you're interested. There will be links for that in the description below. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more clip breakdowns just like this. I upload two new videos every week, so turn on notifications. That way you'll always be in the know when I upload. But most, most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button. It looks like that right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. I literally just said that. <laughs> notifications, whatever. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for watching Tana Mojo with me. I will see you next time, y'all.